What's up, everyone? Welcome to Ola doing stuff in uh, his office. You know how I'm always, you know, recording my amplifiers and, you know, sick sounding amplifiers, and sometimes, you know, I mic them up, make them sound great and awesome, and uh, sometimes I record them straight into, you know, an, on an album or something like that, and everyone's thinking, oh shit, I need to get this awesome amplifier to be able to sound like that. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can make a really awesome kick-ass recorded metal rhythm tone using your favorite distortion pedals and nothing else. No amplifier, nothing, okay? All you're gonna need is a distortion pedal of your liking. You also need an audio interface and a computer because that's how we're gonna record things and shit, okay? And you're like, ah, oh, come on, man, you can't make a kick-ass rhythm metal tone without using a proper amplifier or, you know, a plugin or amplifier plugin or whatever. That's where you're wrong. Well, the thing is that in these distortion pedals right here, you already have a preamp, you know, a preamp distortion. So technically, we should be able to use a pedal like this, hook it straight into your computer, and with using an impulse response, we should be able to get a kick-ass tone. How about that? So on my computer, I'm using the STL Libra impulse response mixer. Now, uh, I don't know if the Libra is free, is it? Is it not? Maybe it's not free. But there's, there are tons of free uh, options when it comes to impulse response loaders. I'll link one in the description you can download and uh, you know, you don't have to pay any money. But I'm using this Libra one because uh, that was the one I found on my computer. So that's what this video is all about. I'm gonna show you these distortion pedals using an IR and show you how awesome it can sound. So right now I'm using uh, Satan Hesu 2x12 uh, impulse response that I made. And here is the metal zone, straight into my audio interface, and an impulse response. No, you have to, you have to push harder. <laughs> there it is. And just like that, it's a sound that you know, it works. When it comes to recording a guitar pedal like that, it's very important that you pick the right type of impulse response. So, best way is just to try out different impulse responses. Am I wearing the microphone? Yes. How lucky we are. Okay, let's try another one. The thing is that most of these impulse responses that I've made have already been run through a power amplifier in the cabinet. So basically, here's the preamp, the impulse response is the, you know, power amp section and the cabinet and microphone. So basically you don't need an amplifier to record yourself, okay? <laughs> This is one of my favorite ones, by the way. It's uh, my oversized cabinet. It's very bassy, but it sounds good. How about that? Okay, let's try out another pedal. This was the metal zone, by the way, and this is the regular metal zone, you know, from Taiwan. Nothing special, no wasa, no nothing. Just, you know, a classic that a lot of people own, you know? So, I mean, you can use this put an overdrive in front of it, and you basically have a real good sounding rig if you use impulse responses. So, let's try the metal muff. That was a long time ago. Let's do it. Metal muff. With the top boost, yeah, which sucks. I remember it sucked. Let's go. No sound. That's just so good. Why? Why no sound? Oh, there you go. Okay, we're ready. Here is the electroharmonics metal muff into my computer using an impulse response. Okay, another one. Okay, let's go back. Let's find something else.
That sounds pretty good for just a distortion pedal into your computer, right? I just want to try out the top boost because I remember it sucked ass. It just uh, became really uh, ear piercing. Let's try it out. Let's not, it's just better without, I guess. That's just not a nice frequency, man. Okay, let's try another pedal. Let's try the uh, patos. It's Greek. Okay. It basically means titties in Greek. That's uh, what my good friend Dimitri used to say. <laughs> it's the Tosin Abasi pedal, by the way. Okay, volume. That's good, actually. Sounds good, man. Rev G3, let's try it out. What? I mean, listen to that. That sounds like an amplifier, man. Look at my face, by the way. It's the face of surprise. That actually sounds really good. Listen to that, baby. Who's calling me? That sounds really good. Let's go with the last pedal I have here. The Friedman B-E-O-D-E-O-L-B-O-P-C-D-H-F by by Great. Okay. This pedal even has a presence knob. So it's almost like a full, you know, preamp. Okay, f that sounds great. That also sounds great. Let me try another impulse. Shit. Here's my Hesu 2x12 with T75. 
440 microphone in center, okay? Off three centimeters. Off five centimeters. Off eight centimeters. This is a lot of fun, man. It's There you go, man. That's all I wanted to show. So the point with this video is just that I wanted to show that you actually don't need an amplifier uh, to record a really good metal tone. If you have a you know, distortion pedal that you really, really like, just hook it up straight into your interface, man. Use an impulse response or something. It will sound good, you know? Obviously for recording purposes, okay? Or like practice by your computer kind of deal. You can use your own distortion pal. Rehearsing and playing live, obviously, you would need something that's, uh, you know, powering a signal so you can play with a drummer. But you can also use in-ears, man. You can connect this to a mixing de desk and use in-ears if you have one of these, uh, you know, impulse response loading pedals, for instance. I'm just throwing some options out there. Okay, and I know a lot of people have been doing this for a long time where they basically just use to put an impulse response to a pedal. And it sounds pretty, pretty good. I think that if you search the webs, you're probably gonna find a shit ton of videos just like this one out there. But here's one now on my channel. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, have a good day.